15 minutes with Uncle Russ. Oh my goodness. Hi boys and girls. This is Uncle Russ coming to you live from Koh Samui in Thailand. Yeah, last week it wasn't from Thailand, it was from Ho Chi Minh City. Yeah, get around there. Eh? Hallelujah. So, how's your, how's your week been? Good week. Well, I want to tell you, it's been an interesting week. It took me a couple of days to recover because, you know, we were just there for, I uh, got there on Friday and back on Monday. So it was a short visit, a little bit of tourism, a little bit of, you, you know, going to say hello to the peeps over there. It's doing well. The people are doing well. Everybody's happy. Traffic crazy, 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 crazy. Yeah, so I must admit that I didn't miss because I've been there before. But so your week good anything radical happened to you anything exciting ah so my wife Zoe says to me oh darling you know what it would be nice to do fish barbecue now we don't call it a fish barbecue where i come from we call it a fish pie. yeah so she bought two little barracudas and a sea bass so no problem i decide like I normally do is I'm going to get the fire ready because you know with fish you can't have the, the charcoal too hot you got to have the temperature just right so the normal way to do it you use fire lighters or little sticks or whatever but no I don't do that I use a special little gadget it's this thing here you see this thing yes and so I'm merrily going along look at it merrily going along with it and um, no shirt fire is not started yet and i hit they hit it at the base of the charcoal and it's going along and going along and it's starting to you know starting to now glow a little bit and i get this little warning in my my head seriously it's like watch out as i get watch out this thing sets a light through here see ya that's what it looks like and it blows it as it blow as it's about to blow i throw it but my my bike is parked on the side with a <laughs> protective cover over it so the cover sets like this this was a brand new um, canister of gas so there's gas spewing out everywhere with flames sets the the bike cover alight and the hose but i can't get to switch the hose on because the tap's on the other side of the burning can. And all I can think about is this thing's going to blow up any second. So next best thing, I run off to the koi pond and I'm trying to take water out of the koi pond to put the fire out. Long story short, no burns, no singeing, no damage, no nothing. Thank you, God. Amen. It's a better testimony. And you know, it's so funny in the mornings, Zoe and myself, we always pray for protection because we don't know, is it an accident or whatever. Hey, you, what a story. But I've got another story for you. And this one's called, look at that, the sick stag. The sick stag. Aesop's fables. Must give the guy kudos over there. It's his story, not my story. But we're going to share a little bit about this thing called the sick stag. And let's see if we can recognize ourselves in the story. <laughs> yes. So, I will read and then we'll have a little chat. A stag had fallen sick. He had just strength enough to gather some food and find a quiet clearing in the woods where he lay down to wait until his strength should return. The animals heard about the stag's illness and came to ask after his health. Hey, so kind, eh? Of course, they were all hungry and helped themselves freely to the stag's food. As you would expect, the stag soon starved to death. And the moral of the story is this. Goodwill is worth nothing unless it is accompanied by good works. Oh my gosh. Hey, how's it, Sansa? How are you doing? Oh, you know, I'm not well. 
I've been sick and I, oh, really? What you got to eat? <laughs> Have you got snacks? And then we help ourselves to the snacks and then off we go. Hey, bless you, hey? Don't worry, hey? Praying for you. How's it, brother? How's it, sister? Yeah, so, uh, sorry, man. Sorry, yeah. I'm praying for you, eh? we all guilty of that. So, this I talk here first. You know me. Me first. Proverbs 3, verse 27 says this. And I'm sure you know it. So, you're going to go, oh, I know it already. But, you know, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Do not withhold good from those to whom it is due when it is in the power of your hand to do so. If you can help, do it. I mean, there's this whole thing going on in America at the moment after that hurricane. And, you know, we are on the other side of the world, so it's very different or difficult to judge who's right and who's wrong. But from what the story is going on, mm, somebody is falling short on, in the help category. And people are desperate, 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 desperate. And you know, that's not, not the only country having floods and uh, hurricanes and things like that. It's around the world. Yes, there seems to be th something on the go. James 2, 14 to 18. Yes, faith without works is dead. What does it profit, my brethren, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can faith save him? If a brother or sister is naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you says to them, Depart in peace, be warm, and be filled, but you do not give them the things which are needed for the body, what does it profit? Thus, also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. But someone will say, You have faith, and I have works. Show me your faith without your works, and I will show you my faith by my works. You know, I was chatting to somebody today about what it is to be in ministry. And uh, they happened to mention that, and you know, each one has their own opinion, mentioned that in their opinion, pastors shouldn't be paid a salary. So I said, wow, that's interesting. And he did correctly say that Paul was in ministry, but he was also a tent maker. I'm 100% in favor of that thing. But did you know that if you aren't a tent maker, you still have to eat, you still have a, to have a place to live, you still have to have utilities, you still have to have a normal life. Now, I know you guys are so happy you volunteer for everything and you don't work for money, you work for free. Of course you do, because you're good guys. Because you've got faith and your works, eh? Yes. And so, you know, it is so important. Yes, it's been abused over the years. And, I mean, we, we can't argue the fact that in some cases, in fact, in many cases, that whole thing... Ooh, what happened there? That, <laughs> that whole thing has been abused. Okay, so we got that, sir. But don't let every single one suffer because you've been hurt by someone or some organization. I mean, you know, and, and I mentioned to him, I said, you know, I understand that back in the day, the only tribe that didn't get anything were the Levites. They got nothing. Everybody else was allocated land so they could grow veggies and, you know, earn, earn a living. But they were dependent on the generosity and the kindness of the other tribes. And I know, ah, you're going, yeah, but it's Old Testament. Generosity goes across the Old and the New Testament. So before you jump on your high, little high horse ivory tower, it doesn't matter, you know, because in, in the Old Testament it says 10%. But Jesus said we have to give everything. And if you go look in, in the epistles, in the book of Acts, what did they do? They sold everything so that nobody went short. Something to think about. Now, 
This is what it says in Matthew 25, 31 to 36. The Son of Man will judge the nations. When the Son of Man comes in His glory and all the holy angels with Him, then He will sit on the throne of His glory. All the nations will be gathered before Him and He will separate them one from another as a shepherd divides sheep from the goats. And He will set the sheep on His right hand but on the, the goats on the left. Then the King will say to those on His right hand, Come, you blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. See, come on. Let's extend some generosity to each other. And again, hey, 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 I'm front of the queue. I don't always fulfill all those things that I should be doing. And my excuse, oh, you know how busy I was. I had to go here and go there and then I had to do this and then I had to do that. You know, life's so uh, hectic and stressful. And we can make all that excuses of whom I am the chief. Yeah, so I'm with you on that. But how about us actually st changing the status quo? What if we were the ones? Listen, read again. Read again. I like this. Don't you like this? I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Let's do that. Let's be kind to each other. We never know. And you know the biggest problem is many people don't. Their pride doesn't allow them to cry out for help. But God has blessed us with CS. Who knows what CS is? Common sense. <laughs> Common sense. I nearly got taken out because of maybe a lack of common sense. Thank God. Holy Spirit warned me. Man, I should be covered in burns. My eyelashes singe. All my hair singe. My body burnt. My bike burnt. <laughs> but no. But note to self. We'll go old school. Fire lighters. And kindling. <laughs> so he just says to me, Darling, no, no, no. you can't use that anymore. I said, yes, dear. You, you don't fight with it because then you're going to be maybe more injured <laughs> than being burnt by an exploding burner. So, is that okay? So now, remember, Friday, I know you worked so hard and God bless you for being such a faithful employee, employer, and you know, yes, you do deserve some rest and Relaxation and R and R, eh? Yes. Tomorrow, um, is there sport tomorrow? Oh, I don't know. I know. All I know is we are the champions once again. <laughs> yeah. We are champions. Yeah. Watch out for us. We may be small, but we hey, buddy, When the time comes, we can we can do it, eh? Okay, so it, whatever the sport or recreation is for Saturday, do it. And please, you know, again, I spoke with people today. We can find time, money and resources to do everything under the sun to entertain ourselves. And yet, the important thing is the gathering of the brethren. Yeah! Yeah! Stop it already. Stop that excuses. Stop saying it's too far, too, too late, it's raining, it's that. Because if we're honest, let, let's say there's a, a famous band going to play, old school band, and you get some tickets. But it is bucketing with rain. And I know what you do. You go, oh, no, it's raining tonight. We can't go. We'll stay home. <laughs> True story. Not a sausage. By hook or by crook. You'll stand in the rain. You'll, I don't know how you do it. But you'll, you'll make a plan. Because 
Yung na open air concert that you're gonna be there and to say, hey, we we did that group and check it out. It was amazing. It rained and rained, but we did it. We can do that, but we can't travel a few minutes to go fellowship with our brothers and sisters. Stop it already. Okay, so all the best. Thank you so much for your prayers for where I went to, you know, the unmentionable. Yeah, but no, thank you so much. We do appreciate it. Thank you for, for listening to this thing, for supporting this thing. Yeah, it, you can give it a like if you want to. Look, I don't count this thing, so maybe I only get to speak to one person. Then it's already 100% return. Amen. So, remember this, my dear brothers and sisters. If I don't see you through the week, I'll see you through the window. This is Uncle Russ signing off until next time. God bless and goodbye.